The central Otago heartland still holds a vibrant community. It is linked by the former railway line that runs through the vast open grasslands that have been farmed for generations. The community changed forever when the tracks were removed after the building of the Clyde Dam. How did the widespread community turn a redundant railway line into a successful cycling trail and revitalize the small communities that had formed along the line? What were the key ingredients? Who provided the vision that the redundant line could become a successful tourist trail with real community ownership? The line wound its way for 150 kilometres from Middlemarch to Clyde through a series of small rural settlements. When you look at all those little communities, they'd been devastated with the pulling out of the railway line and then, of course, the whole thing, all the little areas were degraded as far as population went and they really needed something to rekindle the flame in those little towns. Some farmers used the rail corridor as additional grazing land. Les Cleveland and others saw that as a rail trail, it could ensure a positive future for these isolated communities. Doc and the community worked together to ensure the rail trail's success. I'm sure that Les Cleveland was approached initially because he's such an enthusiastic person and has great knowledge of the formation of trusts and if you want something to be done you go and see Les Cleveland. We wrote out a trust document, we sorted out trustees so that there was a good spread of the trustees through the railway line area so then away we went. It was important to get public feedback uh, along the, the length of the trail and rather than invite people into the Dunedin office where we would have some of our meetings, we said we must go out into the, the various little communities along the trail and meet the people there. And we've done that right throughout and we're still doing that. It's an important part of the consultation process. Community consultation proved invaluable, but many skeptics required convincing of the value of the project. There was this plan to turn it into a rail trail. I said, what a ridiculous idea. Never heard of a rail trail, so I said it'll never work. I thought it was bloody stupid at the time, but Mr Connell said there could be 3,000 people going through a year. It was a bit of a snigger went round the room. There was community opposition, there was political opposition, there was also strong support. Well, we had a meeting with uh, Doc, and uh, the, the, most of the objections, and myself included, were uh, pest and weed control, who was going to look after that, and also fire. There's always a great danger of fire in this part of the country, and particularly uh, in rough land. Yeah, so as far as you know from Community the, consultation uh, continued, and it was important to allow the process to develop freely. The initial feedback from the men was a little bit um, unsure. Uh, you know, we've, we've had the use of this land since the, the last train moved out of here. We've, we've grazed and, and we've used it as an access way along the from one part of our farm to the other and we don't really want that to change and, and they were sort of seeing perhaps too many negatives but at the same time their wives or their partners were sitting there and saying hmm, um, this, there could be something in this for us though if we really think about it. The way to the community is not always through the front gate. I could see that they had possibilities and, um, and it has, it's been fantastic. But it did take a wee bit of believing that it would, it would work. It seemed just unreal to rip up a railway line and then say, well, you're going to bike up there and everyone will love it. And you know, Quite a few ladies said to me, look, we can see an advantage in this in tourism and putting life back into our communities. And they were miles ahead of the blokes in seeing all this. So then we started working with saying, well, look, what say we beautify your towns? We'll give you some materials some bulbs or some trees and everything. And let's see what we can do. And once that happened, then the whole thing swung over to a positive and then everybody was behind it, they could see the advantage. With community groups beautifying the old station sites, local history became important. They were saying that people would be interested in the history and I said, what history? I didn't think we had any history here till people started asking questions about my family and, and forebearers. One night we were down at our local hotel, we were watching the All Blacks play Australia and there were two or three tourists in there and they kept asking about the history of Wedderburn, the history of our families, uh, to the extent that I didn't even see the All Black game. And then we realised, of course we've got a history. We've got families here in this area that have been here for over 100 years since the land was settled. Doc maintains historical sites along the trail and they attract a lot of interest. 
Many locals are keen to share their knowledge of these places. We're well, actually standing in the pub that was owned by Mr Withers, the original owner of the mine, the Golden Progress Mine. He owned the mine, and, but he didn't like working underground. He employed 23 miners. He paid them for a day's work and then took the money off them at night. <laughs> good business there. Very good business. Good business. Yeah. Communities along the rail trail have contributed a lot of time and effort to restoring and enhancing their section of the trail. Recently in Galloway, a meeting was held to get the locals together to reclaim an old building. Some of us weren't present and those that weren't present got elected to the committee. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd just really like to see the valley uh, restored where it can be. When the railway closed, many of the smaller railway sheds and huts were spirited away. Now, the aim is to restore them to their original positions beside the trail. Yes, this is part of the old Galloway railway station. It was the ladies' waiting room. The ladies' loo was in here. Uh, there was a bed here where they probably waited for the train. It's all in pretty good, sort of solid net. It's pretty good. It was through the locals that um, had knew the building was there because it wasn't moved very far. And then when the property came for sale, uh, they approached us and said, "You know, how about us getting it back and putting it on the site as part of their um, landscaping plan?" One of the smallest communities set its heart on restoring the key feature of a popular painting. It was a bold move. The energy of the community had been tapped and the project was all theirs. A lot of people knew about the Woodham and Goodshed because of Graham Sydney. People love the Central Targa themes and Graham Sydney's painting was one of them of July and the Miniatado. So it gave us a lot of energy to be able to bring it back, to know that we had it coming home again. And now that it's back, it's well, it speaks for itself. There's hundreds of people taking photos of it every day, sort of thing. And uh, so it made, Graham Sydney made it more aware us aware of what, what we had lost, really. And it's not only the locals who are working on the rail trail. It's important to involve volunteers from a wider community. They come from all over Otago and Southland and work with Doc on a range of different projects on the trail. I like my gardening, so I'm into, into the planting of the uh, trees just over here and uh, enjoy that and giving them plenty of water and so forth and a bit of loving care as we go. And say, like, come on, you, you grow. It's very harsh out here. So, you know, even in the winter, there's not enough rain to keep them, the moisture there. You've got to look at the right sort of plant that will survive in this area. I've been involved with the rail trail for quite some years. Uh, you know, I've been progressively working my way through it on a bicycle. And uh, we usually come up in winter when it's not quite so busy. And uh, we cycle a few kilometres and double back and have a look at things and just see surprising how much you miss you know it's one of those interesting places you could come a dozen times and see something you hadn't seen before. The estimate that 3,000 people would visit the trail each year which had seemed laughable to some was passed in the first year. There's a lot more people uh, staying at the pub and having meals at the pub. The shop too has noticed an increase in, in visitors and we're hoping that this will be able to develop this further and, and it'll help to support the shop which has really only been kept going in the last few years by the mail run. Uh, the mail run actually uh, is run from the shop um, and it helps to tie the whole community together from one end of the valley to the other. When we started off we didn't expect to get many at all and um, it's quite surprising, you know, sometimes you have to turn people away and, um, but of course winter will be a lot quieter but some people like to do the winter as well to see the different seasons. Oh, I just love the openness, the fresh air, lack of people, yes, just looking all around the place, enjoying the weather. Somehow or other though we've got to um, solve the challenge of not taking away from Central Otago's essential character. You go along the trail at a, at a slow pace, uh, you can tune in to the pace of rural life that's going on. You can stay briefly in the little towns or in the homestays and 
and slow down, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the light and the landscape. And to me, that's all part of a package that makes Central Otago special. The department's going to be working hard to try and keep it like that. Yeah, I was walking past here one day and I came across this sleeper and I wondered what the heck they were doing here. And, uh, so I stopped, sat on it and had a look around. Beautiful view of St Bathans and the Hawktons. And I thought, well, gee, someone on dock must have actually done a bit of homework on this because it is a beautiful view. Most people right through Central that live in the area don't realise the beauty that's here. They, they've farm it all their life and, and they just take it for granted. And so many said, who will want to do the rail trail? Who will want to cycle through this barren land? And people are coming from all over New Zealand and all over the world and doing it and loving it. Anybody that goes through Central often, you get a spiritual feeling from Central Targo. The smell in the air for one thing, you can identify the, the lovely, clear, aromatic scent of Central Targo. The vistas are so wonderful. The browns, the nice yellows, all those tawny colours, they're really unique. We did it this time last year, a couple of weeks before this time last year, and really enjoyed it. So when we had the opportunity to come back, we thought, go for it. I love the scenery. These rocks are just fabulous. Like We don't see those in the North Island. And the people, we stop at one pub for lunch and then head on to the next one and have dinner and their hospitality and they're wonderful people. Well, Mum and Dad did it last year and they raved about the people and the scenery and stuff, so I thought I'd better come and give it a try. It just blows me away like we came over the viaducts and through those tunnels and all those guys have was pick shovels and wheelbarrows and things. It's just been fantastic. The publicans, um, can't say enough for them, they've just all been absolutely great. Yeah, and the food's been wonderful, you know, what else can I say? It's just been fantastic, yeah. Look at the scenery, it's, um, the weather's fantastic. What better place to be in the world than uh, doing the rail trail at Central Targa? Welcome again to the Central Targa Rail Trail West. Do you like mine? This is all free to the fourth year now. And just to let you know that there are over 100 more entries this year than there were last year. For one weekend each February, the trail is inundated with people. A highly successful duathlon is run by Dock and local Lions clubs and attracts competitors from all over New Zealand. I was uh, really against the whole idea of a rail trail. But I'm pleased to admit that I was wrong. It's worked wonderfully well here. It's bringing a lot of people through Central. They appreciate it. And I think that uh, Doc have shown a lot of uh, foresight in, uh, in developing this rail trail, and they should be congratulated for it. The partnership between Doc, the community, and the Trust has been very successful. Over a million dollars has been raised by the Trust to fund the rail trail. When we set up originally with Doc, there was a lot of antagonism, and probably this is against DOC because they're the administrators of a lot of the um, government rules that have to do with the, the farming or the land around the farmers. So when we set this up, the, the Rail Trail Trust, that was really set as an independent body to be seen to be independent and is independent of DOC. So the community feel more comfortable dealing with a group that can work on its own without the bureaucracy telling them what to do. And this was a secret, I think, because the communication that went out back and forward with the community, the discussions we had with them, and the good PR relationships. Now, it's not to say Doc can't have those, but they are constrained by the statutes of what they can and can't do, where the trusts can manoeuvre faster and better than what Doc could. And that's really some of the secrets of the whole thing. <laughs>